Hi there. Today, we're going to discuss the Chinese tea ceremony. In China, there are two major types of teaware used for tea service. One being the gaiwan. This is an example that's missing its lid. Mine broke in storage, so this particular gaiwan is going to be repurposed as a planter. It's used for very light teas, white or green tea, or lightly oxidized oolongs. For the darker teas, most people prefer an Ixing teapot. Ixing clay is renowned for having a lot of minerals and a lot of metal. What are marketed these days are just basic clay teapots. But if you ever hear one that has a very definitive bell-like ringing sound when you clack it together, you'll know that you have a high metal content, desirable and probably expensive Ixing teapot. So what's going to take place is a very casual and relaxed ceremonial tea preparation. Um, opposite uh, the Japanese style, which is very strictly regimented, the Chinese tea preparation style is very laid back and relaxed. We're going to go through every step today, but it can, uh, you can normally just kind of forego things, shift things around a bit, and make it your own private sort of enjoyable preparation ceremony. Uh, to begin, we'll be heating up the teaware. Uh, this is normally a step that I just bypass. But to clean and sanitize everything, ceremonial uh, fashion, we would give everything first a good dash of hot water, boiling water. You'll notice that spills aren't too troublesome because everything's sitting on a bamboo tray and the water goes through these slats and into a lacquered uh, basin that can be emptied easily. I, instead of just taking the tray to the sink and dumping it through a filter, have chosen to use this turkey baster. There's a little hole oops, in the top of the tray. You can easily access the water and remove it, most of it. Okay, now that everything is thoroughly heated up, we've got to get some tea into our teapot to begin. This uh, collection of tools them in the frame here. will come in handy as we're working. And these are just basic tongs so we don't burn ourselves on the hot ceramic teaware. Okay. Also a small bamboo funnel. Often there'll be some kind of presentation vessel. This is just a small bowl, but there's a, a one that's shaped a little flatter that's generally used. Right, now for the rinse cycle. Uh, this can also be bypassed if you're using very high quality tea or tea from a trusted source. Um, but dust can settle over certain teas, um, the darker ones, um, and the oolongs that are rolled benefit from being rinsed quickly because the leaves will begin to unfurl just a little bit. And there also is a little bit of a western fear of pesticides on the tea leaves themselves. So. Our rinse doesn't have to last very long at all. That's sufficient. A 
certainties uh, that are, are not um, rolled or shaped, uh, a lot of their flavor will be in a flash infusion such as the one I just did. So you'll want to test your supply and avoid any type of rinse cycle that's going to take with it the majority of your flavor, especially if you're drinking tea from a very trusted source. Okay. Actually, I'm going to steal a little sip there. Moving on, <clears throat> we're going to do a very fast infusion. The Gong Fu style, uh, the ceremonial style of brewing, involves lots of quick infusions. In this way, the drinker and the guests can note uh, changes in the character of the tea soup. As the leaves unfurl, the flavor shifts. Take place, and we don't want to miss out on that by doing too too long of an infusion. Because then you're just left with the character of a fully brewed tea liquor, and some of the nuance can be left. Uh, Behind, especially with high quality tea. Okay, so this will be our first drinking infusion. Just a little bit into what is called the fragrance cup. And then using my tea towel, make sure that there aren't any stray droplets that are going to get onto the table or the garments of the guests. Okay. Putting our drinking cup on top, flip it. This allows for the vapors and the residual aromas to gather inside the fragrance cup. And then Ah, we can enjoy those intoxicating aromas and warm the hands. This gave tea drinkers long, long ago a way to enjoy the aromas of tea in a sophisticated way without the chance of any spill. And now, with three sips, we're going to savor this tea. And we've enjoyed our first cup. So now we're going to begin with some more brewing. Pouring from quite high will allow the tea leaves to dance inside the tea brewing vessel. And the addition of more water keeps the temperature uniformly very hot inside. Now, using our brush, we can care for the teapot just a bit. Luxuriate in the appearance of its glistening walls. brush can also be helpful when things are a little bit drier on the tea tray to brush residual bits of tea leaf into the bottom. Now we'll be stacking the steeps here. Uh, as I said, the tradition of the ceremony can be tailored to your own likes and desires. 
And often what I will do is start the brewing session with a very light, like a jasmine white tea inside. And then after a number of steeps, um, you'll find that most of the flavor is exhausted. So then I'll just drop another type of tea inside. Maybe a moderately fermented, uh, oxidized, excuse me, oolong. And graduating up to the actual fermented pu'er teas. Pu'er tea is an interesting type. Long, long ago, tea would be pressed because it's it's normally very uh, 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 difficult to carry around a lot of weight in tea because it's so bulky. So by pressing it, it became both a commodity and uh, actually uh, a, a type of money. So in the modern day, you'll see bricks such as this. This is a raw or a sheng pu'er brick. And there's also cooked shoe bricks of pu'er tea. And then those are the ones that are mounded up in warehouses and then the microbial action of uh, various organisms get to work and then they transform the tea. Normally long treks would have to take place across a lot of land mass and there would be a very natural transition through, because of the microbial activity uh, from raw pressed tea. Into these darker, richer, uh, stranger flavors. Most shocking for the first time drinker of a of a ripe pu'er is the fact that your palate can feel a little bit slippery after having a sip. The first taste just primes your palate, and then a smaller second sip um, can in a way coat your palate, finishing it with that third sip, completes the holy trinity of tea sipping. And service for others plays out in this fashion. with the presentation taking place on a bamboo coaster. I should also mention my friend here, tea pet or tea mascot, transforms a hot tea liquor touches him. You'll also see some dark hunter green colored tea mascots, which change to vibrant lime green and, and or white. Now for a third steeping. And you're working with more delicate teas, green teas, which require a little bit of a lower temperature. The high pour uh, serves to cool the water a bit. In the case of a tea that benefits uh, from extremely high temperature, it's mostly just an act to get the tea leaves dancing inside the pot. All right. Sometimes you'll also see a vessel like this. And once the tea leaves have surrendered all of their flavor, 
they can be placed into this bowl, evaluated, discarded. In some styles too, people will put the teapot itself into a bowl like this, and then they'll participate in these sloppy pouring efforts you know, without fear of getting the water everywhere if they don't have a bamboo tea tray or any other type of straining tea tray. The tea service can be very relaxing, an endeavor that will bring people a lot of joy. Find way to while away the hours. Lends a smoothness and a uniformity to the experience of life. See my strainer here. Beautiful lotus. And I didn't clean up this hand. So it's no shame in having a dirty hand. This is actually just tea, but my hands are often dirty from garden work. Just a badge of accomplishment. How pleasant it is to spend a couple of moments together savoring fine Chinese tea. Okay, here's another cup for you to savor. I'll put it here with your with your other one. Thanks for watching.